What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, it's coming down pretty hard out there. It's been raining all night and usually that would kind of throw me off, but not today because we got all of our carpentry done over the last two days and the job that we just started that we're finishing today, we are just doing touch-ups. So uh, what we've done though is we trimmed out some windows that are just like this, just drywall return windows. And uh, I thought about showing you guys how we do that but I knew this rain was coming, so I was like, I kind of need to get this done and the videos take a little bit longer. So I ordered some extra material. I wanted to trim this out anyway, so we're gonna come back to the shop after we do these touch-ups and wrap up this job and I'll show you how I trim one of these windows out. But check this out over here. So I saw this space right here is kind of a useless space up against this cabinet. So I was like, that's gonna be the perfect place to mount my charging station. And you can see I have a lot more room to add more but these are up here, it's just using Velcro. I got this kind of industrial grade Velcro, holds, uh, I think it's like 16 pounds or something. So even that big Makita charger with both batteries on it is good to go. And you, if you want to use these, take them to a job or something, it's just Velcro. So should be good to go. I've had those up there for a couple days and it hasn't fallen down, not one of them. And speaking of not falling down, I didn't hear any big crashes or anything, so the lumber is still up there and hanging in there. So I, I think we're good. But yeah, it's coming along slowly but surely in here. I'm really excited to work on this place any chance I get. And I kind of see the passion that woodworkers have in their wood shops. And I don't even have any real machines in here. And it kind of blows my mind that I'm going to have machines in here. And before you know it, I'm going to be building interior doors. Like, I never thought I'd be doing it. It just blows my mind. So yeah, I'm excited to share this journey with you. I keep saying that, but I keep thinking about it. And speaking of journey, let's, let's go finish this job up. All right, some of you may remember this house. We've done quite a bit here. I'll show you some pictures and stuff of stuff we've done. But uh, yeah, let's go inside and take a look. John's working on the windows back there. I'll show you guys some of the stuff we've done. So these null posts right here were just basic 4x4 posts. They were staying the same color as the handrail and we essentially just trimmed them out. We put a 1x12 down here at the bottom and then we capped it with a 3 quarter cove molding as a base cap. And then going back up on the cap, there's a 1x with a chamfered edge and then a cove wrapping around underneath it. And then about 6 inches down, there's a uh, neck molding, which is a symmetrical panel molding and these things came out awesome. I love seeing these every time I go to this house. It's just a nice classic look for the other work we're doing. Like these windows up here, these are the ones we're working on today, and those are gonna look just like the office when we're done with them, which is right over here. We did these in the office a few months back. It might have even been longer than that, but these look really cool with the shutters. I think it like 10X the look for me. These look super cool with the shutters. So classic, I love it. So back over here in the entry, you can see these horizontal one by 12s. We ran these just like shiplap, but we spaced them out using nickels since they don't actually have the actual lap joint. And it looks super crisp and buttery. I love it. It, it's, it fits in this space. I don't think you could do this one by 12 anywhere, but for this grand space, running it horizontally like this I think is better than actual shiplap because the kind of one by six is just kind of overkill in such a big area like this. So I'd say one by eight at the least, but these one by 12s look great. So making our way over here to this dining area, um, you'll see a ceiling that we did. And I gotta say, I love the fixtures, the furniture, the whole style that these clients have. It's like right up my alley. It's just, it all comes together good, especially with the trim. So check out the ceiling here. This is a one by six WOTG, which is the Windsor one tongue and groove board. And we ran those in a diagonal pattern. And then we crossed them with a one by eight down the center of the ceiling in each direction. And then ran a one by two around the perimeter. And it all worked together for good to them that love trim carpentry. This thing <laughs> looks awesome. And seeing it, this house transform with all the fixtures, all the stuff they chose, it's just cool, one of my favorite houses to be a part of because it's definitely got class. And I'll show you a mantle we did too. So this mantle here is actually a mantle design that I came up with personally and I've done it four times now. 
and I call it the super simple mantle. I did a video on this years ago and several people saw that video and they wanted me to do it for them. So that's what we did. And this is the same exact situation as that. It's a real classic look and I think that's why people like it. It's got some nice powerful trim work on it, but it's not overkill. And I see that as kind of the trend today. A lot of people don't want just a ton of trim but they do want some shadow lines. They do want some really cool millwork. Like you can see, I chamfered the legs here and they stop before it gets to that little cove up under there. And that just gives it another shadow line, just some definition. And I love this view right here. This looks so powerful, especially with that nickel gap wrap in the background on that 45 degree angle right there. That is something I could look at all day. I, I love that view right there. But yeah, check it out if you wanna build this mantle. I'll put a link to that video in the description, but we gotta get back to work. All right guys, we are pretty much heading out of here. We're done. I actually got to load all of this stuff up. All of these tools got to fit in that truck, all the ladders and everything. So uh, yeah, we'll load this up. We'll meet back at the shop and show you pretty much how we accomplish this. All right guys, so we're back at the shop here. It's actually the next day and we're gonna get started on this window. When it comes to taking this drywall out, I mean, you really, you just beat it out of there. So I usually take the claw into the hammer and then I get the, the corner beat out first. And you can see it's kind of breaking there, but we're gonna cover all that up. So it's fine. We can just beat around this and then unveil those screw heads and then just unscrew them. This sucker is sharp. I'm gonna measure from screw to screw. And I got 36 there. And you'll see when I build this thing, how this goes together. And this is gonna be 36, 36. Always gonna clean up that factory cut. So we've got our two legs and our header jam. We just need to rip these down to six and a quarter. It's about right there. So now I can just simply hold this up right here. Put a pencil mark right there. Come up to this side, same thing, make sure I'm up against the screws. Put a pencil mark down here. And with my reveal, with my three and a half inch casing, 
And then with my three quarter inch reveal, that's the overall length that this seal needs to be. So there's kind of the big picture of everything. You've got your reveal all right here. So all this space is your 3 16 reveal. This is a three and a half inch casing. This is your three quarter inch uh, reveal over here on the stool. So that's a lot to kind of calculate. So throwing a jig together like this and just marking it, especially when you have multiple windows like we did yesterday, it's just so much easier to tack something together like this. So now we can measure from pencil line to pencil line and cut this down to size. So we got a rip down seal board now, and like I measured earlier, it's, it's good to go. It's already checked out, but before we can, you know, get this into its place, obviously we need to take out some material right here and create what's called the horn of the, the seal. So that's the piece that hangs over the wall here. So what you can do, these little jigs, I mean, they're everything in carpentry. So you remember I brought this out earlier, this is the exact, um, distance that our horn hangs over our wall here on our seal board. So we know that's the outermost point of the seal board. And we know that seal just needs to turn the corner and wrap where the jam is going to be. All we have to do is measure from this point to this point, And that's how much we need to take out of our seal board to get the proper horn reveal. So hopefully that makes sense. You'll see it all come together, but I'll just measure that. You don't have to measure it in place like this, but I'm just doing it so you kind of get the picture. So we're gonna take off three and three quarters. I'm gonna line that up with my square and then I'm gonna measure over. That's material needs to come out. So these two pieces of material that need to come out can be taken out with a combination of the miter saw and a table saw. And since it's hard to uh, kind of gauge where this blade's gonna hit, I'll usually creep up on these. And you can see I crept up on that one with the miter saw. I started coming in right there, and then I was a little off, so I pulled the board over a little bit more and corrected it down. So now we'll see how we did on our fit here. Pencil line is good there and good there. And yeah, I think we're gonna be good to go here. If you're gonna do these mitered horns like this, you have to have a sliding miter saw because you can't get over here to this piece without cutting through your whole board. So before I glue anything, I mean, obviously you want to dry fit it, but especially with the CA glue, you kind of want a game plan going into it because it sticks so fast with regular wood glue. You have more time and you can like readjust, but it's a good trade off because these things just stick immediately. And that's always nice. And this stuff smells like strawberry too. Delicious. That strawberry. 
our seal is done. So if you look at that, we're right on our pencil line there and right on our pencil line here. So we're good, we're golden here. So now that we got our seal taken care of, this was our header and then these are our legs right here. So for our legs, we're actually gonna do pocket screw assembly. We're gonna use the old John Deere. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But the uh, Castle TSM-12, one of my favorite tools, Got our two perfect pocket holes right there. And they're pre-drilled, which is amazing. I love that about this machine. It's freaking awesome. So for this, it's gonna be pretty basic. Um, hopefully these don't fall out. But we're just gonna line this up right with the edge here and drive our screw in. So now we can take our stool out of there and when we flip this thing, we should be able to line it up right here. And then same thing, I'm just gonna line up and flush these up here. All right, we're gonna make sure it fits first. And it should be, a, well, that went in a lot easier than I thought. That's a good fit. I thought I was gonna have to fight it a little bit more. Now that it's in place, we'll take our little 3 16 offset tool, which is the uh, multi-mark, and I can mark exactly where our reveal is gonna go. We can take our tape, measure from our seal up to our pencil line up there, 34 and a half, and it's gonna be the same over here because those are the same size. So we've got our two casing legs cut. Yep, everything checks out. So when I hold this up here on my proper reveal, I've got, I'm on my reveal right here, you see the corner of this is perfectly lined up with the corner on our return right there. So I'll actually try to mark that out so you could see it. So there's that miter right there. So this tip right here is lined up exactly with that. We need the same thing, same reveal, three quarter inch all the way around, basically reverse, so up top up here. So that's gonna be our little support cap for the big part of our header, which is a one by six. So I'm gonna put this right here. So when I line this up, I'm gonna be right, just right about there, right on the pencil line, and I can double check right here on that miter. So that's good right there. And I'll drop some pocket screws in here. All right, so next side, same exact thing, and then we'll move on. And that one should be good to go too. All right, so we're gonna put this thing away to the side for now. Then we're gonna rip our cap down because I don't have any more one by two on me. So real quick before we move on with that actually, I'm gonna just follow the reveal here and tack a few brad nails in here uh, just to keep this thing kind of where it needs to stay. So when I put this cap up here, I do have pocket screws in my jam legs at the top where I can screw that together. But first, I don't really have a way to attach this, this little header piece to the top upper jam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this whole thing in the castle machine and <laughs> pocket screw it upside down and like just turn it over. Because then once we get some, a couple, probably just three pocket screws up here, then we can attach this piece in and hold it securely right where it needs to be. 
So I'm just gonna hold this right there on my proper reveal. And send it home. So the cool thing about these inch and a quarter is they're not gonna pop out the top. Okay, so we'll drop it down and you can see our three pocket screws right there that we just did as an assembled unit. And we'll send these home as well. Within a matter of an hour, you can see what I've come up with. Look at this, this thing. Looks freaking sweet. Okay, so we got our header glued together now and I'm gonna put some pocket screws in it. I'm gonna put one here, one here, one here, one here. So both sides are gonna get it. So I can have something to screw into for the little cap, the little supporting cap, and then for the header cap. Dang, that looks cool. It's like a little pyramid in there. You see that? Mm -hmm. I got them pretty close. That one is perfect in that one. The others are a little off. When you got a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And when you got a castle, everything looks like a pocket. <laughs> All we have to do to figure out the, uh, the, the length of our header cap is measure our header and add three inches because it projects an inch and a half on each side and inch and a half times two is gonna give us that three. So 41 and a half plus three inches is gonna be 44 and a half. So we'll cut our header cap to 44 and a half. Such a beautiful piece of molding. I mean, just <laughs> outstanding. If I line this, this return up with that return, everything is just gonna be perfect. It's gonna be the same thing on the other end over there. So I'll just load these up and send it. I'll turn this around so you can kind of see it. I'm basically just flushing this up with this board as I go. So started there and just Kind of working my way down, just feeling it, seeing if it's good. I'm just sending it. So last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and pocket screw this apron on. And I'm gonna just kind of support this with my foot here, because I don't want to damage the top of it. All right guys, there we have it. There's our pre-assembled window casing. Let's see how we did. Looks pretty tight inside. This can be pushed over, so we're tight there. 
that, I think we did it. And we still have our little bit of wiggle room there. Our reveals all inside are good to go. Let's shoot it. Really when it comes to installing this thing, it's super easy because it's already all built and it's kind of self-centering because of those screw shims. All I have to do is really make sure I'm close to my pencil line here and I'm good to go. So for this, I'm gonna just use these two and a half inch 15 gauge nails and just shoot into the framing. thing ain't going nowhere. And that's the cool thing about doing this whole pre-assembly. You don't just have to blast this thing with nails. So I can do like one, two, three. One, two, three. Here we go. So I don't know what color I'm gonna paint this. I'm definitely gonna paint it something other than white because we went with the white walls, just some kind of contrast, but drop me a comment for color suggestions. I'm still undecided. All right, so there you have it. There's a super simple window trim install as one unit. Those are always fun to do when you can pop them in as one, just kind of a satisfying feeling when it all works out. But yeah, this thing is simple. It's basically a bunch of rips where you need to rip. This is all pocket screwed together, nominal lumber sizes, and even the pocket screw together is kind of overkill. You don't even really need to do that. We finish nail these together sometimes, but when you got a castle machine, everything looks like a pocket, like I was saying. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of this one. If you have any questions, leave your color suggestions down below, but we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up for this one. We'll see you next time.